Harvest Tune made by uh, Kula by Hero Lopez Nusa, which is the perfect time to invite Paul Nelson up for Bookstock. I think the fire department is here for the band. Yeah. Let's hear it for the band. To read one poem before I um, start reading with the band because of what's going on in the world today. And I wrote this this morning based on a line by John Brem, who wrote a book called The Dharma of Poetry. This poem is an act of non-aggression as another man tests limits of his own sanity and somehow convince 200,000 other men to help him see what's beyond. And in watching my own thoughts fantasize the million ways to avenge, combat this, which only makes me more like a small caudillo, strong man, with no troops following me, not even our pet rabbit. So I chant a mantra to focus the yearning Pray in silence for peace to succeed. Practice Latihan to keep the best outcome possible. Write this poem to try and dwell more often silently in the valley of its making. It won't bring back Kiev, but is the small thing I do today to make the next Kiev less likely. Reading from my new book, Hi, Bundela Serna. First of all, it's an honor to be here. I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful Jim invited me to play with this band. I'm grateful for this amazing music that we get to enjoy every other week here. This is the first public reading of this book called Hi, Bundela Serna, tonight. The official launch is on uh, April 13th at CMP Coffee House. But it's a delight to be here and see only one mask in the audience. <laughs> one mask on the chin, one mask in the audience. And uh, beautiful to be, hopefully, in the post-COVID era. These poems are high ones, so it's a medieval Japanese form combined with a neo-barocco approach. So uh, in Latin, there's a school of poetry in Latin America that's very dense poetry with abrupt subject changes and parenthetical thoughts. And so I'm gonna read the first five poems from this. And uh, Fred Waugh had something very interesting to say. He said it was, uh, I have this email, it's a great email from Fred Waugh, a great Canadian poet. He says, I feel like kind of an accidental tourist, which is, I think, a great way of dealing with these. Consider these mini vacations, each poem, improvisations. And don't worry about meaning, just enjoy the poem. So these are from Heidbund de la Serna. Ramon Gomez de la Serna. At dusk, a homing pigeon flies overhead with a key to lock up the day. On Orcus, it's a red-tailed hawk, lost in the steam from hot springs, always find its way over Otter Cove, unless there's trouble. Blue Heron waits to push the world away, still stands in the incoming tide, aware of the angel's sword, aware the poison in the yew tree where power comes from, evergreen from elder is anima. Awaz holds the entire futon. In the dream we teach poetry in the former factory made of red brick and the glue of destitute kundalini. 
were suspicious of their religion, and the Latihans already worked its celestial shutter. The pigeon still there, a flight full of donated wonder bread, flies north till it becomes one with an obsolete constellation. That's the key. Just ask the sacred kingfisher, or is it belted? Odin's sister, not his sister, hides in the yew's roots. Two, Duende's dance step. Death is inaudible. In the intimacy of the house, it walks on tiptoe. The long notes that ascend. Skulks adjacent to the seaside orchis November mountain, hoping to garnish a wave with a tendon or femur. Any place can morph into slaughter. Even a rocky vista redolent with pines, firs, and rose hips drop on the soft moss next to deer scan. Handholds. The shadow lying beneath my copy of Eternity to glimpse the blonde lock of yours somehow noticed when late November afternoon sun hits a certain angle of my shoulder, my morning shudder. Beyond obstruction, beyond the demonic realm of parlor tricks to near where waves of the incoming tide rebound off an off-island rock, an island itself, to make concentric semicircles in a futile path back to Fidalgo. They'll die en route as you and I might, struggling for that last glimpse, that last lover's smiling eyes, that death bedside daughter who eases the track back to the garden. Cliff grip, measure, all senses acute, but who studies surrender? Time is closer to dust in libraries. Libraries, Greg Pat. Time is closer to dust in libraries. Inside the dust, universes with their own constellations, some obsolete, all gain velocity, a planet in need of periodic leap seconds when the ancient light from stars gathered, careened around hallucinated Olympic furs, causing alarm. Fire emanating snakes. Quickening can be an apocalypse or a birth crisis, can be a fetus or a species. The word quick originally meant alive. Whitehead called the present the vivid fringe of memory tinged with anticipation. On other occasions, what you make of it, how you justify, ringed with wintering scotch broom or the pods left behind by lavender blossoms, once he might have crumpled in the minute universes of his sweater pocket, and she goes from zero to cat driving in 60 seconds to give him the gift of the present. Saw his history laid out in microscopic skin flecks, she wipes from the library shelves beyond the photo of his father, still alive, still holding that pipe, posing. You can almost smell the Walgreens cheap tobacco you were to teenage shoplift later. Time as cloud and ash and the exile of attempted compassion rebounds with a flaming email. But that don't stop you from reaching out to the higher selves. Constellations may be patient, but they won't wait for the end of your hallucination. that it was an angel that invented swords. Never forget it's the oldest bodhisattva carries one aflame in his right hand to carve a slice off duality. Never forget a sword's a scalpel can hack at nafsu, that which fosters soul erasure. Hack at the stag that stifles your hike up entrance mountain. Hack to clear a path as King Solomon might Machete as mere threat to find a way into cold mercy. Nature sometimes needs a knife now and again. Give bristle to the dog. 
liberate axes in own fire, or simply to slice up the mango. You might like pastelitos de guayaba. You might be sickened by what antepasados are urging you to cut just this side of obstruction. Or it may be Frank Morgan alto honking the daylight out of front row yummies in full battle. George Cable's right behind him, as he was with Art Pepper on the prison tomb, the trip. Why did they chop off the missionaries' heads, the child asked. But they were no mere visitors, only the first line of colonialists whose angels have no swords, whose single god has a beard and vendetta, whose trick is stealing fire, whose exceptional American time is running out. Rockets red glare, colors don't run, but burn, sliced by Manjushri's flaming saber. Five, carbonism. A carbon copy is taken of everything that is said in the dark. A diamond reflects all darkness whispered in a room lit by faint beams from the cold moon. The moon when horns are broken off. A long night's oak moon, almost seen dodging sunbeams, applying mascara, ordering another foamy cappuccino. A diamond's a girl's confidant in the hardest allotrope of carbon. Buckyball's a carbon, C60, but I've never had one festooning an earlobe or translating Miles Mademoiselle Mabry from wax into the darkness of sound's primitive hunger. Copy this. The photo of goats return after dark to an always older city. Energy lines still flow out footsteps made by the swarming, invisible dead of Chief Self's tribe, beyond silence that the pathless woods climb up any entrance mountain. A carbon copy being taken by shades at the mall ward, at the indie neighborhood coffee house where the proprietor builds community one sneer at a time, at the back house by Lake Schwabash. A carbon copy of everything said in the dark, every grunt and mastication, sometimes trading phosphorus for arsenic, entrails for a larger heart, evidence of a 27th genesis on a planet in need of at least one more. Absence of reflected light or photon storehouse for the footsteps of one more invisible tribe.
Devon Lewis on drums. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Jim Hall yeah. I'm Nelson joining us. Yeah. I would like to also
also graciously acknowledge, very excellent, Kevin Flory Barnes. Oh.